So for this week's clinical file, we have Ken, and Ken is six months status post lumbar fusion and has complaints of persistent pain and often declines to perform basic core exercises. The therapist would like to change the patient's perception of pain while teaching effective coping methods. Which of the following principles would be the most effective? So we have A, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, also known as CBT. Uh, B is Operant Conditioning. C is Classical Conditioning. And D is Positive Reinforcement. So let's jump up to the top of this question. We want to break this out. It's kind of a lengthy one, right? I want to break it out. It seems to be a lot about these uh, psych principles. And so you got to know quite a bit in order to get this type of question correct with confidence. Let's jump into it. Ken. Is six months status post lumbar fusion, pretty straightforward there, and has complaints of persistent pain. And oftentimes, hold on, let me stop. Uh, persistent pain is usually just another term for chronic pain in a lot of cases. All right. So if they say constant pain, that's not necessarily chronic. But if they usually say persistent pain, a lot of times that's synonymous with chronic pain, like pain that's lasting typically more than six months. So the patient has persistent pain in this question and often declines to perform basic core exercises. I want to stop there after this first sentence and kind of get an idea here. So the patient potentially has some chronic pain issue going on because of this lumbar fusion. They're not wanting to perform just basic core exercises. Already, I know that that's a problem. I'm thinking, okay, if you're declining to perform basic core exercises, it sounds like it's pretty light. The patient is probably worried or anxious about the fact that it's going to potentially increase pain or make them worse. So we got a patient that potentially has some anxiety or fear or just worry. Does that all make sense? Are we all on the same page there? All right, let's continue down to the next sentence. It says the therapist would like to change the patient's perception of pain while teaching effective coping methods. Again, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. You know, it is our role as a physical therapist to help the patient to transform their mindset about pain, their perception of pain, all right, because we know that that fear and the anxiety can keep them from progressing, right? So we want to work on that. And then it says, while teaching effective coping mechanisms or me methods. Great. So the last sentence, the question stem, it says, which of the following principles would be the most effective. For those of you on the podcast, let me go through the answer choices again for you. We got A, cognitive behavioral therapy, also known as CBT. B is operant conditioning. C is classical conditioning. All right, and D is positive reinforcements. So let's go down these answer choices. A says cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. Okay, so what is cognitive behavioral therapy? If you don't know much about it, like I said, you can see it written as CBT sometimes or cognitive restructuring. Those are other names for it. And we psychologists definitely use it, but we use the principles in PT practice um, to help a patient who has anxiety, to help a patient who has anxiety that is potentially keeping them from you know, being able to participate in PT services or perform, um, you know, at an optimal level or progress. So it's anxiety that's typically holding that patient back either in life or in therapy or whatnot, right? And so this anxiety is typically there because the patient has some like uh, unhelpful, maladaptive thought patterns. So yeah, you know, if it was related to like pain or something like that, you know how a patient can, you know, have an injury or have a surgery and now it's like everything can potentially cause pain, right? Or they're, they're just worried of being in a lot more pain. Well, that's maladaptive thought patterns. And that, of course, can produce anxiety. And then, um, you know, unhealthy behaviors, maybe like becoming more sedentary just because of the fear of getting um, getting uh, in, into more pain or whatnot. See, all of those things can produce more anxiety and also further complication. So what is CBT? What is cognitive behavioral therapy? Well, it is going to be a type of therapy that addresses anxiety 
in order to help work the patient out of these unhelpful thought patterns, in order to help the patient work themselves out of unhealthy behaviors. We want the patient to get better. We want to break up these faulty thought patterns about pain. So like in that definition that I'm giving to you, does that sound like something I would want for this type of patient? I would say absolutely. I mean, the patient coming into us right now obviously has some some faulty perspectives about pain. They're not even wanting to do basic exercises, potentially because of anxiety and fear. And so we need to work their way out of that, right? Cognitive behavioral therapy is an excellent way to do it. So I like that. I'll put a check mark next to it for now. Doesn't mean it's the right one, but it fits pretty nicely to me. Let's look at B. B says operant conditioning. If you're not familiar with operant conditioning, it's a type of learning that relies on a system of rewards and punishments. I'm sure you've seen this before come up, maybe in undergrad and even in PT school, where there is a system of us providing rewards to a patient in order to reinforce the behavior. Like if we, we want to reinforce a behavior, if we want them to continue to do something, we can give them like praise or we can give them a specific something that they desire, like a reward, right? Um, well, that is a part of operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is a system of providing war, rewards or praises or, um, you, you know, we're really trying to influence behavior. And there's a lot of different things. Uh, um, operant conditioning is a term that is inclusive for a lot of different types of things. Positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment. Like, okay, so there's a lot of things that go into operant conditioning. But what you need to know is it's a, it's a system of rewards and punishments in order to influence behavior. That's what it is. Now, when I look up at this question, Again, we have this patient, potentially anxious, fearful, has a faulty perception of pain, and we're looking to change that. Do we want to use a system of rewards and punishments in order to, because it's both. Operant conditioning is, is, is potentially both. It didn't specify it. So this is a, is a system of rewards and punishments, potentially. Is that something I want to do here? in order to stimulate some type of behavior or influence behavior? The answer to that is no. No, no, I, I don't feel like that's a very effective method for us to start to change the patient's perception of pain. Now, if we were really trying to influence a behavior, maybe there was something that the patient was doing incorrectly, or maybe there was something that we wanted the patient to do as a behavior, then operant conditioning would be an amazing thing potentially. But here, it just doesn't make sense. So I'm going to put an X next to it. I don't like it. Let's look at C. C's classical conditioning. I always used to mess these up in PT school and get like so confused. Operant conditioning is like, what's that? And then classical conditioning. Okay. Have you ever heard of Pavlov's dogs? I know you heard of the dogs, right? Dogs salivating and all that stuff with the turkey or the meat. I can't even remember the actual study and what type of meat they use, but it was some type of meat, right? Maybe a classic sirloin. I don't know. But anyway, Pavlov's dogs. And so what is classical conditioning? That's where we're trying to take an unconditioned stimulus and associated with a conditioned response. What the heck am I talking about? Well, think about it from this perspective. You have a dog, right? You have a dog, and obviously dogs tend to salivate when you put some good old treats or meat or whatever it is in front of their face, right? So you, obviously there's a connection with that. And so anytime you bring out the meat, dog salivates. Great, great. Now you get to the point where every time you bring out the meat, you also ring the bell. Right now, the dog doesn't know what the bell means initially. Right, that's the unconditioned stimulus. The, the dog doesn't know what that means. But every single time you bring out the meat or the treat or whatnot, you also ring the bell. So now it's the dog is salivating every single time that we ring the bell and have the meat present. Well, then you keep doing that until the point where you can take away the meat completely. Just ring the bell, and now the dog still salivates, even though the meat is not there. 
All right, so that is taking an unconditioned stimulus, this bell, dog doesn't even know what the heck that means, right? It's taking an unconditioned stimulus in the beginning and associating it with a conditioned response, which is the salivation. There we go. So that is classical conditioning. My question to you is, mm, is that something that I really want? Is that going to help me change the patient's perception of pain? Is classical conditioning something I would use to change a patient's perception of pain? And I would say absolutely not. That's not something that I could really use effectively here. It's not definitely going to be the best one out of the list. Still, CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy would be the best so far, okay? So I'm going to eliminate classical conditioning. I don't like that one too much. Let's look at D. D says positive reinforcement. All right, so positive reinforcement is providing a reward or praise for some desired action, some desired behavior that you want from the person, okay? So you're giving them a reward pretty much every single time that they display this great behavior that you like. It, it just so happens that positive reinforcement is, is one of the types of operant conditioning. Let me say it again. Positive reinforcement is one of the types of operant condition. And so for those of you who have gone through the PASS system, you've worked your way through the MPT Clinical Files PASS system where I've talked to you about test strategy, where I'm helping you to work through every type of question. There's one of the strategies I teach you in there about looking at your answer choices and finding out which one of them potentially is the same exact answer as something else. In this case, in this question here, operant conditioning is pretty much the same as D, positive reinforcement. Why? Because positive reinforcement is another type of operant conditioning. So they're kind of one of the same here. And so that means I can eliminate both of them with ease and get them both out leaving us with our best answer here, our best one of A, cognitive behavioral therapy. That's it, baby. All right. So final answer here is CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. Congratulations if you got that one correct. I know some of you may have steered away from cognitive behavioral therapy because you're like, well, do PTs do that? That's that's more for the psychologist. Not da, 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 da. Well, here's the thing. We are not psychologists. However, we can use CBT principles we can use CBT principles, all right? And we can help the patient with anxiety while they're, you know, within our care. And so you may say, well, how do we do that? Well, one of the ways is helping the patient to identify the first signs of stress, you know, nail biting, um, leg shaking, you know, stomach starts to get queasy or have to run to the bathroom, whatever it is, right? Um, we help them to identify those first signs of stress. And then once we're able to do that, then we start to determine, well, what's the pattern of occurrence? Does this happen in the morning, in the afternoon, in the nighttime? Like, what brings it on? What type of triggers? We help the patient. We may even recommend a journal for that patient. For them to go out to Walmart or Office Max or whatever, get themselves a journal and then write down, okay, when are they getting these, these signs of stress? Like, when are they noticing that? And they start writing and keeping a nice journal. It's like, all right, great. And then we get them to the point where it's like, okay, every single time where you start to feel these signs coming on, we're going to be proactive and I'm going to have you do stress management techniques, things like deep breathing, just as simple as deep breathing. Even teaching the patient diaphragmatic breathing, which has relaxation, you know, as a part of it, teaching them those things to do at the first signs of stress. Those are kind of behavioral strategies in order to reduce anxiety and allow the patient to, to start having a coping method, a coping mechanism for when they start to have anxiety. There you go. Final answer here is A, cognitive behavioral therapy. Again, congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. For those of you on the podcast right now, I never just want to leave you with that basic explanation. If you go into the show notes, I have something special in there for you, a cheat sheet about cognitive behavioral therapy, but most important, I have some medications on there I want you to look at, 
and the when to refer, all right? When to refer your patient who has anxiety on the MPTE. Check it out, show notes, click the link in there.